So, woohoo! <laughs> um, and and it's, it's fantastic to have, you know, the MD of John Lewis, you know, go on national TV and talk about what we implemented with the guys here, you know, in, in a couple of months. We started beginning of October, and by 27th of November, we had this up and running. But Simon here has the task of, uh, with his team, looking after this site day in and day out. So, uh, Simon, if you could talk a little bit about how you use these. Yeah, I mean, never knowingly undersold to us is, is the nightmare from an operational point of view, because that means we have to react to our competitors from the whole period through, uh, through Black Friday week and beyond the, the whole kind of peak period. So that means we're always adjusting to, to what's happening in the market. Uh, as, as I'm sure uh, New Relic won't want you to see, there are a number of screens there that are not New Relic. Um, and that's what we had the previous year. Uh, what that is generally telling us, we've got various marketing tools, uh, search engine optimization information, we've got server information, uh, and every year we tune milliseconds out of the, the website and the servers. But what we really lacked was insight into what, what was happening with our customers, the, the, the end user experience. And that's where the new Relic information uh, came in. We'll talk a bit more about that. But this is our control room. We gather together. I think I had the joy of 36 hours with one hour sleep. Uh, uh, spent in that room, so I really did end up with square eyes looking at those TVs. Um, but what's important is that we get the key IT team together at the same time with the business. So we've got the marketing guys, we've got the commercial guys, the trade guys, all in that room together. And that's how we manage the launch for Black Friday. We've got all that real-time information. We can adjust. We've got a number of uh, levers that we can pull to be able to adjust the, the speed of the website depending on, uh, on what's happening. So that's really critical to us. The other thing, which I wasn't expecting, uh, was it turned into a bit of a kind of a media centre uh, with ITV News and, and, and nearly everybody from every part of the business coming down and having a tour. So whilst we're in the middle of preparing for Black Friday, they all want to see what's going on. But what was really useful was to be able to share that information, to show that real-time information, to really give confidence to the business. So for those of us that are in IT, to be able to kind of give that confidence to our business colleagues is, is really, really critical. So if we, oh, I've got the clicker so we can move on. So, so why does that matter? Uh, I feel disappointed now our numbers aren't as big as trillions that everybody else has. For me, one and a half billion sales is quite a lot. So that, that's plenty for me to have sleepless nights about. Uh, for Black Friday, for us, that's, this year was nearly 45 million in one day. So that means in a minute, our peak minute, 75,000 pounds a minute. So when my guys are saying, is this a P1? Should I consider that? I just remind them, right? So one minute, that's 75,000 pounds while you're thinking about whether you should raise a major incident or not. So it really kind of crystallizes the uh, speed of action for me. Um, and, and what's changing, I mean, we talk about more than 50% mobile, it's, it, it's kind of way more than that uh, uh, at times. And we can look at that profile through the day on Black Friday. What you see for us uh, is, is very early in the morning, 6 a.m., all our customers are on with their mobile phones. Not so many people buying on the mobiles, lots and lots of browsing. I mean, there's, st there's still a, a lot of orders, but not as much until everybody gets into the office on Black Friday and everybody presses the button and, and orders something. Uh, and that's really our peak time between kind of 9, uh, 10, when everybody gets back onto their desktops. Then throughout the day, it stays pretty heavy on the desktops. Then you get into the evening, it goes mobile again, but mobile as far as sitting on your sofa with your tablet. Um, so, so we class them as mobile as well. Ironically, everybody seems to be sitting on their tablet buying more tablets. You know, those were the things that, that they were buying more than anything else. How many tablets do you need? I say that, all my kids, they all have one each, so I, I know where this comes from. Uh, and also changing customer behavior. I mean, uh, it, it was amazing if anybody saw the press over uh, Black Friday to see the shops and to see the media frenzy waiting for the fight in Asda again or wherever. Of course, you wouldn't get that in John Lewis. It's after you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but it, it didn't. I mean, uh, in the shops, I believe the only person in the queue was a, a journalist looking for somebody to interview, so they had to talk to themselves. Uh, and it had really shifted online. So 33% 
So we've got about 45 stores. Uh, we normally average about 33% online. I think for the whole Black Friday week, it went up to about 45%, and for Black Friday, it was over 50% was on the website because people didn't want to have fights in shops. They knew what they wanted, and they went in and, and bought that online. Uh, and, and we have to change because every single year, it, it really has changed, and you can never quite predict it. So if I go back to Black Friday in 2013, what we took on that one day was the equivalent to when we launched the, the website in, I think, about 2001. That was the whole year's takings from 2001 we did in one day in 2013. That's how much things have changed, and it changes every single year. And expectations of customers have changed massively. Uh, you, know, you now expect a, a, a sub two second response time. Otherwise, you get bored. More than three seconds, people are abandoning and, and going to uh, our competitors, or more, more likely coming to us, which is really good. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, these are kind of industry averages, but I mean, there's some figures there. Uh, that a tenth of a second can make you know one percent difference in revenue, so that that's huge. Uh, and what we've done is you know shaved tenths of a second off, trying to do that on the server side, and we've done that and done that, and and you then get diminishing returns. So what became important then is is to do something different and look at a different perspective. So this is where. For me, we've started probably different to many of you. We've started with the browser and uh, insights rather than the APM tool because the gap to me was about that real user monitoring. And this is an example of one of the screens. All the numbers have been anonymized because our press department wouldn't let anything out. Uh, but this is, this is a, a real screen of, of, of what we got there and what uh, Manesh and, and the team have, have helped us put together really rapidly. Um, so, and I really like the combination of the different views and perspectives you can get here. So, you know, top left, you can get minute by minute how many orders you're getting on the website. In the middle there at the top, you can see over time, how does that compare to the previous day, the previous week? Um, you know, you can get your kind of traffic profiles, how much is on mobile. Um, uh, and, and the one I hit in the middle on the right-hand side is how many uh, people have seen the holding page. That's the thing we try and avoid more than anything. When that goes above zero, uh, you know, that's when then the alarm bells start to ring, and that's what we try and avoid. And then on, on the bottom there, we uh, look at how many customers are, are, are on the uh, website and, and how busy is it. That helps us determine with our marketing department whether we send out uh, another 4 million emails. So marketing are so keen to hit the website at the time it's already busy. You know, we have 20,000 people already on the website and they go, I want to send out 4 million emails, right? So don't do it at the point where it's already the busiest, control that. And we sit there with the marketing team and, and we're able to kind of control that. What I would say about this screen is actually a lot of it we already had with different tools. Uh, and, and on those other screens that you saw you know, on the previous slide, they were there, but they varied from sort of one minute delay up to some of the data was an hour and a half behind. So what this did was give us the real time view and it brought it into one screen. So that, that's what was really important for me. Probably the bit that we really didn't have insight into was uh, you know, that end user customer experience, the, the page load times. So this is another example of our screen where we can see uh, the search page, the, the product grid page, uh, you know, product page itself, and how each of those were doing and how it was varying over time. Uh, and you can see the, the split on the right-hand side to see, well, how many people were seeing two to three seconds, how many seen, were, were seeing different experiences as well. So that, that's really important. What we had before, we had synthetic monitoring. So we've had that for a while, but that pulls it every five minutes, and it gives you, you know, a server sat here, there, wherever. What that doesn't give you is what customers are really, really experiencing. On mobile, that may, might mean your 3G network isn't very good, but it, you, you need to know whether it's their network or whether it's your network or it's your servers that are not working well. So that's what's, you know, really important and has given, given us insight. And, you know, we were sharing milliseconds from the server side, I don't actually have responsibilities for how fat those pages are on the website. My commercial business colleagues put all that content on, and I think uh, 
we're talking about for train line, how the marketing guys, the trading guys want more and more on the page. And they just make it fatter and fatter and fatter. How many different adverts can we get there? That slows it down. It can add seconds to how quick it loads. And that is really important. So we're pretty new uh, early on our journey. We've only just got this in before uh, the peak. But this is going to be my focus with the business. This is what I can use to go back to them to say, you know, this is where we can make money. We can just shave down that, that, that kind of page time. And something as simple as we noticed um, that, that, that the images always used to be 80%. We like to have set up for 24-inch Apple monitors and have the highest resolution, highest quality images. Well, that costs kind of download speed. It's okay when you're on your corporate, corporate network or your, your 4G link, but it isn't for all, you know, our customers in the, the middle of Yorkshire, where, where I originated <laughs> from. Um, yeah, I, st I still la laugh at my family with their, uh, you know, well, 250 six kind of uh, load, loading up with a, a, a modem. That it, some of it is still really like that. Um, so that's where it's important. But, but we, we discovered that the images were, had, had defaulted back to 100%. Nobody can remember when that happened, who did that. So what was really important was to highlight that and, and do something about it. So that's what that has really enabled us to do. So I'm going to pass over to Manesh to talk a bit more uh, in detail about some of the things behind those high-level dashboards. Cheers, Simon. So, and, and as I'll go back to Robson's presentation earlier. You know, it's a, we partner with our customers. You know, we learn a lot. Uh, working with the guys in the team, um, they taught me whole new ways about how our tool is used, and so we want to share some of that information. Um, so a quick example, so this is a browser screen there that you're seeing. Um, just before Black Friday, so uh, Abhishek and the team asked me to um, help them out before the Black Friday launch. It happens at midnight on the 26th. Um, so I worked with the team from 10 o'clock and everything was working perfectly fine. And then as you can see on the timeline, it might be a bit small there, but just a little bit past 11, the page load speeds went through the roof. The app decks, the page performance dropped through the floor and users started leaving the site, right? So, um, you know, that causes concern. You know, Neuralic was there showing what's, what's going on and, and, and the effect of it. And working with a team after a sequence of clicks through the tool, looking at what data we had available, we were able to show that there was a third party that had made the change because, uh, you know, the team at John Lewis were ready to push the button, but, you know, you can't, you can't know what everybody else is doing as well. And so a third party had made some kind of change in their system um, just at the right time or wrong time, and, <laughs> and uh, it went horribly wrong. But again, you know, monitoring can't stop issues from happening, but they can absolutely give you that early warning and enable you to identify where the problem is. And we were able to do that, and, and you know, by the time it got to 12 o'clock, things were okay, and we managed to get some, get some sleep. Um, so, oh, sorry, Simon did, you but did, I did. So. Yeah, I was at home. <laughs> uh, remote working. Um, <laughs> it works. It works at New Relic. Um, so uh, the, the next morning, I, I went back in with, with the guys, and we're sitting there, and you can see that big bump just before. That's what happened the previous evening. And Simon was in the command center with uh, a lot of people there looking, and, and Simon noticed that that little blue line right at the end of that top right-hand chart started to wave off the normal course. Um, so given we've only implemented the system you know, in the last month, Clearly, I was a little bit concerned whether we're collecting all the right data. So, you know, you start to scramble around the data. But we, again, very, very quickly after the sequence of clicks, we, we, we identified that there was a, a JavaScript on the page, on the search page, that was, you know, becoming uh, less performant. Uh, and so on the John Lewis website, if you go and search for a product, sometimes it will pop up with this little dialogue that says, did you find what you're looking at? That's correct, right? It, it pops up with a little dialogue that says, did you find the product that you were looking for? Now, you can do all the testing in the world, but on client-side things, when they happen at that end, being able to do that testing with that many users sometimes isn't something that you can account for. So we spotted that JavaScript. Simon spoke to the engineering team, and they, they took that JavaScript off because we didn't want that line to continue upwards. And you can see that line then came back down and reduced back to what should be normal operating behavior. So it, it, it's avoiding your users having that negative impact, right? And it's, again, it's the early warning system um, and working together to help identify those bits. In return, the guys have shown me all new ways that you can use insights. Um, so, and and they've, they've allowed me to share some of this with you. So 
in the operations team, understanding what's going on and when incidents happen and being able to collect that data and, and talk about that meaningfully to the team um, is very, very important. So what they've started to do in Insights is, if you look at this bottom screen first, is giving them incident numbers, date, date IDs, and then each of them relate to a dashboard, which aggregate that data together within that time period, and therefore they use it as a communication mechanism, provide that to at the end of the incident to say this is what happened, this is what data we collected, using that information to help um, optimize and, and, and perfect how you collect that data, what you do the next time, put more monitoring, put more alerting, all of those pieces in place. So that's a really interesting way. I didn't th think of using insights, but you know, um, they taught me and so I'll, I'll share that with you guys. Um, another thing is how to use data to decide what not to do as well. Um, so we saw this chart here. This, so this was like early in November. Again, you know, within, within a couple of weeks of implementing this, we saw the latency on the real user monitoring spike up. Um, now, that would usually cause alarm bells and people would need to run off and go and find out what's going on and try and fix it. The point was that the guys here and the guys here use the data to figure out, well, who is being affected, which set of our customers. And they, they narrowed it down to this was a telecity issue. Um, they narrowed it down to, i.e., the issue was outside of their perimeter. It was a certain set of customers on certain ISPs that were having the issue. And therefore, their time wasn't spent trying to find the needle in the haystack or you know, put effort where it wasn't, wasn't needed. Um, and Simon, I'll ask you to explain the, the next one. Yeah, this is uh, another similar example. And, uh, you know, in, in, in both this one and the previous one, this wasn't within our network. This was uh, what, what turned out to be a BT issue. I mean, uh, BT broadband is still one of the, uh, the, the biggest out there. They're the majority of our customers that are, are coming to our website. And when we suddenly see a, a dive in orders, we immediately think there's something wrong with our infrastructure. What's going on? So I do, I get everybody running around, we, we get the incident team together, what's happening? And normally, we, we wouldn't get to the bottom of this, we, we would be really clueless, because we're going, the servers are fine, the network's fine, the, the database is fine, all the components, what's going on? In this, we could look at it from, what's the traffic coming in? And we could see it was just affecting BT. Uh, and, and, and afterwards, you know, we can get it from the, the Guardian that uh, BT had an issue. The same with that telecenter issue where they had a, you know, telecenter is, is, is one of the main internet exchanges uh, and it had a complete power outage and that took out three of the ISPs for a, a brief amount of time. And, uh, and, and we just don't have that insight normally. We, we cannot uh, see that. And it stops us trying to look into something that's not there. If I'd not got to the bottom of that, you know, I will continue to worry about that. It will stay as an open problem record that we will never get to the bottom of, and we can waste valuable time on that. So this is really important to give us insight into things we just could never see before. So it's what not to do <laughs> is important as well, right, as well as what you do. Um, so going back to on Black Friday, uh, which is actually a great time to work for John Lewis, it's like Christmas and everything all merged into one. There's pizza, there's drinks. It's, it's, it's a great experience. Um, so I was, we were standing in the uh, I was standing in the command center, and one of the business analysts said, um, "It's interesting that we've got two promotional offers today. They had a price match promotion and they had a Black Friday promotion." And she said, "Well, I wonder whether we're taking any business on the price match because who knows about price match." So my inner data nerd kicked in, and I thought, well, we must know the answer to that, right? So, and literally, pizza in one hand, laptop in the other, within three minutes, you know, we managed to create a quick dashboard that shows you, these are the visitors coming to the, and, uh, coming to the homepage and then going to Black Friday promotions. These ones are clicking on the uh, price match. These ones are converting to purchases. Where are they coming in from? The point was, it doesn't matter what question you want to ask, right? We got the data there, and as, um, as Todd put it earlier, it's lossless. We're collecting every single event. It's just beautiful. You can just ask it a question, and it just gives you the answer so quickly. Um, and so when I asked Simon if I could show this uh, uh, little example as well, we have to get sign off for everything from the from the press team. S Simon talked to me about his mobile app. So I'll uh, I'll ask you to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Trendline talked about it it, it it earlier, but I mean, you know, I always have my mobile app with me, and 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 it, you know, it's easy just to kind of flick through. The, the data and you've got everything there you can you know you can drill in um, 
and, and, and you know, get, get that real-time information all the time. Uh, and for an insomniac like me or anybody in operations, that, that's good because you can sort of check on it and then go back to sleep. Um, but what, I mean, what's really nice uh, about this was the ease of access. And many of our other tools, we just didn't have that kind of quality of app with insights to be able to get that. Now, this is probably high-level information generally, so that, that's kind of good for me. It's good for my bosses. I'm, I'm probably the worst nightmare for my team, who's sitting there, some of them, because I'm looking at that going, why has that gone up? Why has that gone down? Um, but it, it really is easy accessibility of data, and, and you can get some real valuable uh, insights from, from that information. But even for somebody like me, okay, I, I, I do come from a programming background, but I've uh, left that behind quite a while ago. I think I was probably too dangerous, so, uh, so, that, so they promoted me out of trouble. Um, but, but I found it really easy to be able to kind of build the dashboards I wanted. Um, so the guys have built you know, their view on what, what's important, bring those dashboards together. And I was able to easily edit that, create my own dashboard, which is instantly added to a favorite and it's available on my app. And that was really important. So we did a long process of looking at competitors who shall not be named um, <laughs> of, of New Relic. And to be honest, that to me was almost the, the, the killer thing was the ease of access to that data because you need it instantly, you need it where you are. Unfortunately, websites are 24 by seven. You're not always in the office. So having that ease of access is really critical for me. So we're going to wrap up because we're standing between you and lunch. So uh, we're going to finish off. But just um, extending the ability to analyze anything. So when I first joined New Relic two years ago, um, the very first presentation I had in San Francisco was from Lou um, when he introduced insights to everybody in the New Relic community. And he did this amazing Thing where he took the entire Twitter feed and shoved it into Insights just to show how powerful it was. So um, I wrote something similar, not quite as good as Lou's, but just took a little bit of Twitter data and pushed it into Insights. And, and I showed the, the team at John Lewis, and I kind of thought it's just a good way of illustrating the ability to analyze anything. Ask any question in your data, and you'll get an answer pretty quickly. But as it turns out, this is actually quite a useful thing. So again, Simon, if you could explain how you use this? Yeah, I mean, we, we already have a social media team. They have their own tools. They respond to all the tweets that we, we get to uh, John Luce Retail. Um, and we tried to use their tool, and it, and it gave us a little bit of information. But again, this brings it into one place. We can have that all there. Um, and you kind of think, well, maybe your customers would phone up your call center if the website was down or if they were having an issue nine out of 10 times, probably, probably more than that, they will not do that. They will go to your competitors. What they will do is they will go onto social media and go, this is absolutely whatever, and tell you about it via that. So that not only is something that we didn't have the, the, you know, didn't have the information to know there was an issue, because generally it's a subset of people. It's a, it might be one of your 20 front, frontline servers and it's knowing that and knowing that early that you can address it. And, and, you know, Twitter, Facebook, that is where people go now to report an error. They don't let you know directly. So that is why it's really important to have that information. Cool. So final, final slide. And uh, I think from all the experience working with the guys, I think Tom summed it up really, really well. Um, and you can find him later on. He's just sitting there asking all the questions. <laughs> um, so he said, when, when some of our other tools, so this was, we got a, a Google Hangouts, and so I asked him the day after Black Friday how everything went over the evening, and he said, uh, so when some of our other tools were having issues, the Neuralic one kept supplying the data. The output was clear, and people were able to parse the data and, dis and have a discussion around it immediately without any interpretation needed. So I think that kind of, you know, from all the morning's presentations, that's what we aspire to do, and without any prompting from Tom, honest, right? Tom, Tom wrote that the next day, and, and just, it allows you to understand your data. It's easy to understand. Start to communicate about it. Um, and, and we work together as a team. So the closing note here is, you know, in partnership with, with New Relic or in partnership with John Lewis, we, all of us at New Relic are truly, truly passionate about making your software business successful, right? And, but we can only do that by being connected to you guys, working with you. Um, and we do hold ourselves accountable for delivering on all the things that we, we make promises about. 
we don't make promises lightly, but we do. We we are accountable for them. So, and that's why partnership has been great. And I've worked with um, other customers here, like the Confused guys, for the video this morning as well. And we just want many more of those. Yeah, and I, and I, I would say I take this opportunity to thank Manesh and the amount of effort he's put in because. Again, that's one of the reasons that, that we went with New Relic, that the effort that these guys put in to work with our team, and see all my team nodding there, makes the difference, Get, gets the value out of the tool, gets you up and running really quickly. Um, and, you know, it is a relatively easy tool to use, but there are lots of things, Twitter feeds, things like that, that you just don't instantly get out of it and you don't even think about. So the ideas that Manesh is coming up with and working closely with the team is, is absolutely critical to success. So, uh, yes, thank you. For thank that. you very much. So, All right, thank, thank you, you very everybody. Much. Enjoy lunch. <laughs>